People hear the word sanctuary and don't always know what that means. And what we are is we're a home for the animals. Cleveland Amory, our founder, always believed in creating a place where the animals could be looked after, not looked at. We're not an entertainment venue. We're not somewhere that people can come for, for the day just to, en to enjoy looking at the animals. We never put animals on exhibit. Even today at our open houses, we do these for truly educational reasons. We want to educate the public on the issues that these animals faced in their prior lives and hopefully change their minds and get them involved in the advocacy to try to fix these issues. So even today though, I mean, as you see, our chimps have gone up. That's their choice. Mm -hmm. We don't guarantee anybody to see anything, and that's not what today's about. It's about to come here, see what we do, and see our mission. We actually have 43 species, almost a thousand animals roaming on 1,310 acres, and they've all come from various backgrounds. We have the whole sanctuary broken up into four areas, um, but basically everything comes from either cruelty, neglect, or exploitation. Uh, we have chimpanzees that have come out of research laboratories. We have primates that have come out of people's backyards and basements and that were pets uh, that really shouldn't have ever been kept as pets. Uh, we have horses that have been safe from horse slaughter. We have animals that have been um, diverted from going to captive hunting operations where these animals are kept in caged areas and then uh, a price tag is put on their head and they can be shot and mounted for that price. Uh, and instead, um, luckily, we're able to get them here. These are endangered animals that are just truly being raised for one purpose, and that's just to shoot them and mount them. We've had horses come in from the, the drug Premarin, which is pregnant mare urine, is what that stands for. After their production cycle, they're generally sent to slaughter. We were able to get those horses here, and they're living out their life on these pastures, which before that, they were literally living in small stalls where they couldn't even turn around. Um, and then the other uh, minis we have here came from the children's carousel rides where they actually sit on them and go around in circles and when those guys arrived, horrendous conditions, a lot of hoof problems and uh, they actually would walk in circles still, they didn't know anything other. Um, so it's just every animal here has a story and we try to tell that story to hopefully get people to change their minds about some of these issues. And all the animals that we have here and all the work we do directly ties into the campaign work that we as an organization, the Fund for Animals and with our partner organization, the Humane Society of the United States. So for instance, our four tigers that we have, we have four tigers, three were rescued from a roadside zoo, which is not any kind of an accredited zoo. This is just a, a person that has a bunch of private animals and charging for people to see them. And then Alex, our fourth tiger, was actually a private pet in the backyard. And few people know that there are more tigers in captivity as pets here in Texas than there are left in the wild. And that is a horrendous statistic. And so we're working in the legislative uh, process here in Texas trying to get a law passed to prevent uh, and stop the private ownership of big cats and certain primates. We, did, we tried it through, the, uh, through um, the, uh, the legislative process last session, it failed, but we're coming back this session with the same law to hopefully make that change here in Texas to be able to stop this egregious act of, of owning these animals as pets. The, every animal that come here has, has, has been through some hardship and, and the various scales of that. Uh, some have been through the worst atrocities and bounced back very quickly. Some have come in and, and just whatever scars they came with just don't ever completely go away and that's fine. And We will work with every animal in every way we can and if they don't want to be around humans, that's fine. We don't ask them to. Our horses, as you saw out there, some will come up to the hayride, most of them won't. Um, they don't have any interest to have any interactions with humans and that's okay. It's all on their schedule and on their personality. But we do work to tr uh, work on a trust, especially with our primates. We want to have that trust with them, and they've been living in a biomedical research lab for many years, and humans were always a negative um, uh, element for them. Um, so uh, we, we really do work hard to get them to, uh, to um, trust us, and that way we can actually examine them, we can look over their bodies, we can potentially draw blood from them without actually having to um, sedate them, which is something very important. So we do what we call operant conditioning, build that trust relationship up with them. Well, our hope for everyone that comes here, and we understand many people come here, they hear that we have this many animals, this many species, and want to come and see the animals. And we want, we want you to come in here and see the animals, learn their stories, and then hopefully come as an animal lover and leave as an animal advocate. Uh, that's what happened to me. I came here uh, over a decade ago. I obviously came here with a love of animals, and I left changed. Uh, and I knew from that point forward I could when you know better, you do better, and suddenly I knew better. And so therefore, I, it started my pathway to becoming an animal advocate, and I got more and more and more involved. And the more I learned, the more I researched, the more I realized that I had to do something. So uh, that's what brought me here today.
Um, so it's just every animal here has a story and we try to tell that story to hopefully get people to change their minds about some of these issues and help us get involved um, on the advocacy side and change the laws and change the, the mindsets and, and change the, the course for many of the animals that can't unfortunately come here.